What's going on, everybody? Welcome back into the channel. Today, we're going to be bringing you another 3 0 decklist video featuring the Leia Organa deck that had won the locals here at Meritor Beach Games. So, if you guys like these type of videos, make sure you hit that sub button. Support is always greatly appreciated. And again, thank you to all you guys for all the support lately. We're going to make this one kind of quick. We're not going to like overly drag it out, but let's go ahead and hop right into the deck list here. We have Leia Organa. We're going to talk about the leader as we always do. Leia Organa allows you to attack with one rebel and then another rebel after for an action that's really really good value to be able to attack with multiple things in one turn can really progress your speed and make it so you can actually grab initiative faster than your opponent most more often than not the thing is is like i feel like leia in my opinion might be the fastest deck out there maybe a little bit faster than sabine again that's my opinion it's probably wrong right everyone else saying oh sabine's faster sabine's better blah, blah blah but i actually prefer to play leia myself over sabine and then obviously if you control five or more resources you can bring her out as a leader unit and then when she attacks you get to attack with another rebel unit which is pretty good she also has raid one so she's dealing four damage on her attacks so she's just really solid able to attack again with multiple things in a single action is actually really really valuable and when it comes to the base, we play Tarkin Town. Being able to deal three damage to a damaged unit can come in handy in a match. Uh, I think in my tournament, I've only I, because this is my deck list that I used. I only used Tarkin Town once, but still, it actually did kind of matter. And overall, I think that Leia's speed is her biggest asset. Obviously, especially with an aggression deck like this, an aggro deck. I mean, it's just she's just really solid. Now let's go ahead and hop over to the deck list here. The main deck list, as you can see, has no legendary cards, which is nice. The thing is, it's not quite budget because there are a couple expensive cards like Red 3, like K2SO, and for a cause, I believe, and that kind of makes this deck not budget. I will be bringing more budget uh, deck list videos starting this next week. I actually have a deck list that I'm going to be running in the tournament this upcoming weekend, and I'll showcase that budget list. There's going to be how i want to do my budget list are going to be like 50 dollars or less actually it might be even lower but we'll figure it out when we get to it but getting back into this i'm going to go over some of the important cards because uh, like a lot of this is kind of standard but there are a few cards that i might play that are a little bit different than other people right obviously the fleet lieutenants are kind of standard in a leia deck but they are really really necessary because being able to play and attack with a rebel getting a unit and attacking with something and then if it's a rebel though everything is a rebel in this deck it just gets stronger. You can deal a lot of damage into the base. I actually have regional sympathizers. Now, this often does get sideboarded, but if I am going up against maybe a control deck or more of a mid-game, late-game deck, because, again, Leia, this Leia deck might struggle in the late game because we have no, like, quote-unquote finishing cards. So this will at least help me to restore. And then if you pair this up with Keep Fighting, you can potentially restore four in a single turn, which is actually pretty solid in trying to maintain your HP on your base. Um, Bright Hope, though, it probably is used in some Leia decks, but Bright Hope might be underrated in my opinion being able to bounce back let's just say a fleet lieutenant or a wing leader back to your hand to be able to use their on play effect again the following turn is actually really valuable in trying to maintain your speed or boosting up your units to make them stronger in case of wing leader i just think that bright hope actually does provide some value here also being a sentinel in space to protect your green squadron a wing or your red three if you need to do so i think that bright hope is actually pretty solid and then obviously you know everything else is just kind of standard you want to get in and attack the base as quickly as possible sentinel might be slowing you down because my main deck list doesn't really have many saboteur units but we have precision fire to make something saboteur and if it's a trooper it gets stronger heroic sacrifice can go ahead make your guys stronger and then you get to defeat the unit so that works very well with k2so four calls i believe in obviously being able to cycle your deck essentially putting the cards that you want next turn on top and dealing damage to your opponent because we do have a lot of heroic cards it's just a lot of this deck is very good in synergizing with each other and i think that it just makes the deck really really fast and again the last card i want to talk about is keep fighting it's just really important because again this with a ton of cards boosting up with like cards that give like Two tubes can give something raid two for the phase, and you can keep fighting on that card and deal that attack twice, and it still has raid two. This is a really good combo. So again, a very fast deck list synopsis, just basically showcasing like, hey, this deck 
just wants you to keep on attacking. Use Leia's ability to attack with multiple units in an action. Really, really strong. And it's just a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and hop over to the sideboard because the sideboard's not too crazy. This does have legendary cards, but you can swap them for a card that I originally had in my original sideboard because I did not have home one during the tournament, but I did want to have home one just in case we got into those matchups that last till the late game. But you can replace the home ones with the U-Wing uh, reinforcements. I think that that's also comparable, you know, change in and out, right? So we have Spec Force Soldier, Wolf, and Jetta Agitator. These are all saboteurs, and Spec Force Soldier gets rid of Sentinel on a single unit for the phase. These are good when you have to go up against those Sentinel heavy decks, those kind of like controlly decks that you need to go ahead and try to swing around. So that's why they're in my sideboard. And I will adjust, probably taking out regional sympathizer or, you know, stuff like that. Maybe some bright hopes if I don't need them. Maybe I can get rid of some metal ceremonies if I'm playing against those long. Yeah, like those are kind of the cards you want to look towards to add more sentinels into your deck if you need to do that against certain matchups that are heavy sentinel and kind of like trying to play for the mid to late game right and then when it comes to the three home ones again they're not necessarily in the sideboard you don't need to have the home ones i have the home ones because it gives restore two each friendly unit gains restore one which is really solid and trying to prolong your hp and try to keep you alive in the late game where you might struggle and then also um it allows you to play a heroic unit from your discard pile for three less cost so you can get back your uh, fleet lieutenant get the effect off you can get your red threes and stuff like that so it just works really well also if you want to go ahead and bounce something back from your hand get a bright hope bounce something back from the field into your hand to play it you can make some really cool plays that way but overall the deck is just meant to go really fast in my opinion this might be the fastest deck obviously it's like a head-to-head -head, you know sabine or this but like i actually really like playing leia and i think that her aggro style is a little bit more fun because you can do a little more combos right so with that being said we're going to go ahead and show off two matchups i had a matchup against um an Iden deck and a matchup for against a vader deck for the tournament so i'm going to showcase those decks kind of go over what my thought process was in the moments of the matchups and yeah so without further ado let's go hop over to those matchups and show you guys how the deck runs all right, so we're here. We have our matchup against Vader first. Uh, I'm not going to be showing the best two out of three full matchup because that'll take way too long. I don't want these videos to be super long, but we have obviously my Leia deck against his Vader deck. He's got energy conversion lab, so something's going to be getting ambushed. So that could be really scary if it happens to be his super laser tech and he can try to cheat out Vader. So this is something that obviously I want to try to be as fast as possible, preventing him from being able to get Vader out onto the board. Because if Vader comes out, it could be an issue because he can clear my board pretty easily with Vader with how weak my small and small my units are. So again, the thought process here is be as fast as possible, focus on the base, and take out units here and there if I need to, right? So I go off and I start off by playing a Sabine. Obviously, it's kind of a staple. Sabine is pretty solid and she gets to do extra damage to the base. Even if she's attacking a unit, she can deal one damage to the base. He goes ahead and he plays out his death stormtrooper. That's actually kind of scary, mainly because it's a three call, like a three damaged unit. So he can do a ton of damage and he uses Vader's ability to deal damage to Sabine and to my base. So he's starting off doing a lot of damage, but again, you're going to see kind of soon just like the combos and they're not like crazy combos. It's just like, it's pretty simple, right? I go ahead, I spend three getting out that fleet lieutenant, dealing five damage to his base here, which is actually kind of good because it's again, I get plus two because Sabine's a rebel and then I can deal an extra damage to the base using her effect. So it's just, that's 20% of his base gone in one single action. That's pretty solid in my opinion. And you're seeing, again, the speed of and the synergy throughout the deck just with the first couple of cards. So then, obviously, he has his his uh, Stormtrooper here. He can attack into my base. He can play a card because he can also play the uh, Snowtrooper Lieutenant and get a, a, an attack on. But he goes ahead and he plays the First Legion Snowtrooper. I'm going to go ahead and grab the initiative. There's no reason for me not to. And now he can go ahead. He's going to use Vader's ability, ping Sabine again at my base. Dealing another damage to the base, putting me at two damage. And then he's going to go ahead after that and swing into my base, putting us both at five damage. So 
he's keeping up with me, which actually is kind of scary for me because if he can keep up with me and then eventually get out Vader, it can spell the end pretty, pretty soon. So we're going to try to, I like, again, in this deck, like I have a ton of like small units and, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to think about what I want to put down. So it just takes a little bit of time when I put down resources sometimes, but we're going to ready up here. And actually the first things first, again, I want to go as fast as possible. I'm going to use Leia's ability and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to deal six total. Actually, I'm going to swing into his base with my guy, deal three damage, right? And then actually I'm going to use Sabine because Sabine's going to die from Vader's ability anyway. I'm going to take out his biggest damaging unit. And then I'll be able to do one extra damage to the base using Sabine's ability, which is actually really solid. Another thing to keep in mind that another reason why I did that was because the Snowtrooper's Lieutenant gets plus two, plus zero, and Overwhelm. So he could have attacked with uh, his Snowtrooper into my Sabine, do three damage to my base, and trading off that way. So I had to kind of prevent that from being a thing. So he goes ahead and he plays out his Snowtrooper Lieutenant. So kind of like the Fleet Lieutenant, he's going to go ahead and get off a pretty solid hit to me. He's going to deal four damage to my base. And again, he's keeping up with the damage. I'm going to go ahead and play four out. And we're going to put down a K2SO. K2SO, very solid. He has Overwhelm, which is very nice. And then on top of that, when he's defeated, I can deal three damage to a base. Or I can make my opponent discard a card from hand, which is actually pretty solid in the late game. But he's going to go ahead and he's going to deal one damage to my base. And then also K2SO. Now, it's an interesting thing. Obviously, he might want to try to get rid of K2SO as fast as possible because having him on the board and dealing four damage into his base multiple times could be a problem for him. So I understand him trying to get damage in on him. So maybe I can only get one swing on the base with him or even less if I choose to swing into a unit and stuff like that. But so that's, I guess, why he's starting to damage my K2SO. But again, I'm not too worried if K2SO goes down here because, again, I get to do three damage to the base, which is typically what I go with unless their hand is very low and then I'll discard from their hand but most of the time I am chucking three damage at that base keeping up that momentum and the pressure on the base so we're readying up we're gonna go ahead and swing using Leia's ability we're gonna swing into base for three and then I'm gonna use my my K2SO attacking into his stormtrooper uh his uh, Snowtrooper Lieutenant, and then dealing the excess Overwhelm damage to the base. I now put myself at 1 HP, hoping that he would actually take the bait and blow up my K2SO, because he can swing into SO here and deal four da uh, 3 damage to my base, which is good for him. So getting 3 damage with the Snowtrooper Lieutenant is pretty solid, but then also I'll be able to deal 3 damage to his base. We're going to go ahead and see his Grand Marf Tarkin here. And he is going to go ahead and get a couple Imperials into his hand. You see Admiral Piet there. He can try to get Ambush on his bigger units. He does end up taking it. Though in this matchup, I don't think that that was the play. Only because like he has to get that onto the field and then play a 6 cost unit. So next turn, he would have to get it onto the board. And then live another turn to play a 6 cost card to have it have ambush and the thing is is like this match is going so fast that i don't think he's going to be able to get to that point so i'm actually like okay cool he went for that that's sweet uh i go ahead and i four three i'm going to put out a red three uh very good card every all my heroic cards get raid one very very solid he for one he does end up procting He's taking out my K2SO, so next turn I don't get to attack with it, which is okay. I get to deal another three damage into uh, the base there. Honestly, if he didn't use his Vader on my K2SO, I might have used my Tarkin Town on my K2SO to finish off the game. So, either way, he was going down that uh, that turn. Uh, not the turn, but the, it, during this game. So, we see my Fleet Lieutenant gets re readied up. And he's going to go ahead and swing into my base with his Snowtrooper Lieutenant. Because now at this point, he has to try to keep up with the damage. We have a ton of... Um, we're kind of outpacing him here. And then you see me bring out Leia, which is really good. Now Leia gets to attack, and my Fleet Lieutenant gets to attack. And they both get Raid 1. 
from that. So Leia has raid two, so she's dealing five damage. A fleet lieutenant is dealing another four damage from the raid as well. And that's going to be the game right there. So you see kind of like just how fast the deck is uh, using the ability of fleet lieutenant to get off that damage using uh, red three at the end of the match before I attacked with Leia and stuff like that. Just getting that extra one damage does matter. The K2SO dying. Yes, he did use his ability to take him out, but I was going to do the same thing with my base taking out my own unit. So to then go ahead and deal that three damage. And either way, I was going to win that turn either way, whether he killed my K2SO or I did. So again, really fun match, really fast, kind of showing off that speed. And now the next matchup we have against Aiden, which we'll hop over to right now. See you guys there. Now we're getting into the matchup against the Aiden deck. Now Aiden has the ability to heal off damage every time one of my units is destroyed, which is pretty good. For my opponent here, I'm going to go ahead and play my A-Wing. He has the initiative to start, and he takes initiative right away. But when it comes to this deck, this is one of the decks that I, the reason why I have Wolf in my sideboard. If I need it, it'll go in in the second match if things kind of hit the wall. But we get our A-Wing out. My opponent's board, again, it's not too crazy because he just took the initiative, but he goes ahead and plays Power of the Dark Side, which actually kind of sucks for me. I am then going to go ahead and play my Fighters for Freedom. Fighters Freedom is really good. It's a saboteur, so I can get around those Sentinels. But then also, every time I play a red card, I get to deal an extra damage, which is the main reason why I kind of focus on getting that out first. And hopefully I can now just start playing a bunch of red cards to just start pinging his base. And yes, he can heal them off as he takes, off, uh, takes out my units. But again, if I can play multiple red cards a turn, I can kind of get around Aiden's ability, which is my thought process here. He plays his Sentinel. Uh, I do have Saboteur, so I'm not really worried about that at all. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to play red three. I'm going to ping his base for one. And then I have Fire of the Freedom with raid one. So again, the synergy throughout the deck. I'm now going to go ahead and swing at him for four. And um, and yeah, we're just, we're just, you know, cooking up. Five damage. Boom. First attack, five damage. This is, again, the complete synergy. It's it's very common, but it's just, again, you're just seeing the, the synergy throughout the heroic red cards. They're really, really good. Uh, it's one of the reasons why Sabine's so good, and Leia is very solid as well. So now that we have the, um, the two years on the board, I could have used Leia, but he goes ahead and he ambushes with Rook. So Rook takes the damage and then gets shielded up. So then now... He can go ahead and just pretty much take out any unit that I put out there. So my thought process is maybe I shouldn't put things into the ground right now. So maybe we go for the aerial strikes. Uh, you know, my remnants of Thrawn coming in here. We have to kind of think about, I'm trying to think, do I bring out Leia right now? Probably not. Let's go ahead and we bring out our wing leader and we're going to boost up our red three. So our red three is going to be able to do five damage every attack because of raid one that he gives itself. Uh, and by that, I mean, he just has raid one, not that he gives himself raid one off of his ability. But we get those two experience, so he becomes a little bit beefier. Aiden's going to go ahead and proc. He's going to go ahead and heal the base, heal on his base. So that's a little bit rough. He's going to start healing up. We're going to go ahead and spend the two. And I'm going to bring out Sabine. Now, Sabine is, you know, kind of just here. He's going to go ahead now and swing with his cell block guard into Sabine. And then I'm going to Tarkin Town his cell block guard immediately. Get it out of there. Uh, he takes the initiative. So now without the Sentinel there, I can now bring out Leia. And I can provide that um, that pressure. Because Rook can't use his ability on leader units. So it is what it is. Now we go ahead and we can attack into the base with Leia. Leia is going to have raid 2 because of red leader. Uh, not red leader. Uh, red 3. And then also... Uh, I'm able to, obviously, I would have been able to attack anyway. He already grabbed the initiative, so the effect doesn't really matter. But again, you're seeing that synergy. Red 3 and Leia, you know, doing that. And then I'm going to go ahead and quickly play out my uh, Metal Ceremony. I don't have any experience tokens on me. I have to go run up and grab them. But I get to go ahead and give Leia and Red 3 an experience token right now because they have attacked this round. So, well, this phase... Wing Leader does not get the experience token because he just came out and he did not attack. So that's the main thing there. We get to power up these two powerhouses that we already have because we use Wing Leader to power up Red 3. You know, we're kind of in a really good spot. 
Red 3 is beefy. Leia is, you know, a little bit better off being able to take more damage. Now, because that experience token, I'm able to live an attack and an overwhelm barrage for Leia. And my wing leader is kind of beefy. So now my opponent has to go ahead and find a different way to take out my units because overall barrage will no longer work he's going to only be able to, be able to do five damage using overall barrage unless he powers up rook in another way so we're kind of sitting pretty here those extra experience tokens using metal ceremony were pretty solid and now we can go ahead and we're going to be getting into like a really kind of a big combo on my side to kind of finish off this game and i'm actually really i actually really enjoyed this play when it came down to it, but he's just trying to figure out what he wants to do from here. Because he has to decide whether or not to take out one of my units using a world barrage or, you know, he goes power to the dark side. Obviously, I'm going to go ahead and choose to get rid of my wing leader. And now I play, go ahead and play my fleet lieutenant, fleet lieutenant procs. It makes Leia swing. She gets the extra damage. And then also because of that, I get to swing with red three so red three finishes off the game so that combination was just like a great way to finish out the game so going over that combination here we have uh lieutenant coming out giving plus two to leia so leia is now due she gets raid one raid two because of red three right she also has the experience token so she's dealing six damage and then plus another two. So that's eight damage from her. And then off of her ability, being able to attack then with red threes, six damage on top of that. That was a like a 14 damage hit. And it's just cleaned out Phil's space. So that's kind of the speed that you're working with when it comes to Leia and the combination you could potentially do in like the early game. Like this was a very fast game, especially against an Iden deck. So with that being said, you know, Try out this Leia deck. It's a lot of fun, very fast. It's not super expensive in the fact that it's there are no legendaries in the main deck, so you can kind of try to build that deck pretty easily. But again, if you are looking for a fast deck, an aggro deck, and you don't really want to play Sabine, I recommend this. Highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. But with that being said, we're going to go on and get out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys are new here, hit that sub button. Support is greatly, greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.